The question I get asked the most recently is which drone should I buy, a Mini 2 or the new DJI Air 2S? It is indeed an excellent question, but not an easy one. I've already compared these two drones in terms of video quality and functionalities. You will find the link at the end of this one. But I know that a lot of you are interested in photography, so in this video I will analyze in depth photo quality and features of these two models to see which one is better suited for different kind of users. Beginners, casual users or semi-professional. I have analyzed the different aspects of these two models in depth in several videos. You will find the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you find this video interesting. The two models have very different features and several of them are extremely important, so we have to quickly analyze them before moving to compare photo quality. These features are very important to make an informed decision about which drone to buy, but this chapter is almost the same as in my video comparison between the two models. So, if you already watched that video, you can skip to the next chapter. First of all, the Mini 2 sells for 470 euros against 1000 euro for the Air 2S. Size matters. The Mini 2 weighs 249 grams and remains below the 250 grams threshold. Therefore, here in old Europe, the online exam is not needed and you can fly with less strict regulations in urban areas. It simply needs registration for the drone operator. Because of the big price difference and the more relaxed regulation, many will think that the Mini 2 is the ideal drone for beginners. But things are not that simple as we will see. To remain below the threshold of 250 grams, DJI had to shape grams wherever possible. So the Mini 2 doesn't have any of the bells and whistles supplied with the Air 2S. First of all, there are no sensors for obstacle avoidance, so a lot of care is needed when planning a flight, and certain situations are simply too risky and are better avoided. In flight, the Mini 2 is not as powerful as the Air 2S. The wind resistance, according to DJI, is 29 km per hour against 38 for the Air 2S. The sensor of the Mini 2 is the old 1 over 2.3 inches that equipped all previous models of the Mavic line except the 2 Pro and the Mavic Air 2. It can shoot photos at 12 megapixels. The sensor of the Air 2S is 1 inch and can shoot photos at 20 megapixels. Therefore, we should expect at least a much better performance when cropping and reframing, but also probably more information in the colors and in the shadows. Both models have an automatic exposure bracketing mode. In the Air 2S, five photos are taken in rapid succession at different exposure values, with a difference of 0.7 stop. In the case of the Mini 2, only three photos are taken, and I don't like it, because it reduces the benefit of shooting in this mode. I have shot all the images in this video in automatic exposure bracketing. I have then merged the photos to HDR using Lightroom. Then I have post-processed the best single photo, and the image merged. I've noticed that in all circumstances the merged image works much better for the Mini 2. There is less noise, richer colors and extended dynamic range. With the Air 2S the individual single photos are so good that in most cases there is no need to use the merged one. But in any case I like to shoot always in AEB just to make sure that I don't accidentally get a badly exposed one. Let's be nice and start with friendly light conditions. 
The first photo is shot in late afternoon, with the sun to the left and slightly behind us. The Mini 2 does very well here, with nice warm colors and good detail overall, and a nice structure of the sky, although we notice a good amount of haze between the sea and the sky. But with the image taken with the 2S, we enter another dimension. The detail is astonishing, the colors extremely rich and natural, the stretch of the sky just perfect, and part of the haze is gone. Side by side we again appreciate the excellent job done by the Mini 2, but the Earth 2 comes from another galaxy. The next few shots are taken at sunrise. Nice result here with the Mini 2, with good detail and very low noise. Although the colors are a bit overtaken by the red orangey cast from the rising sun. In R2S we notice richer and more natural colors. Zooming in, there is small detail in the trees and the roofs of the buildings with the 2S. In the next image, the Mini 2 does again an excellent job, with very good detail and no noise at all in the shadows. But again, the colors with the R2S are much richer and more natural. Look how the trees stand out. I am running out of words for the R2S, its performance in all departments is simply astonishing. And one of the things I keep noticing is the incredible richness and beauty of the colors. Even against the full rising sun, the light on the trees in the foreground is magic. Even though the Mini 2 is doing really well so far, the colors in comparison look flat. Let's get tougher now and move to a typically very difficult situation for the roads. The only two models that I would consider using for photos in the direction of the sun so far are the Mavic 2 Pro and the Air 2S. I have done a comparison about photo capabilities of these two models. There is a link on screen now if you're interested. In this first image of Mount Etna with the sun just outside the left edge, with the Mini 2 we can see that the tail on the left part is completely gone, and the colors are just washed out by the sun. The r 2 s performs much better and manages to maintain detail and colors, except for the very left edge. But if we crop slightly, the image is excellent. A similar image and a similar result, this time the sign is on the frame, and sadly the one with the Mini 2 is unusable. Detail and color are totally gone. The result with the 2S is sensational, considering the situation. Again, if we crop a bit of the left part, we have good detail and color and excellent structure in the sky, despite the full uncovered sun shining in the frame. Now the sun is just outside the right part of the frame, but once again the one with the Mini 2 is unusable. Still, under this condition the Mini 2 performs better than any other model equipped with the same small sensor, but that sensor is frankly outdated. For the Air 2S the same situation is a piece of cake. The detail is well maintained and the colors are again beautiful. Analyzing the extraordinary performance of the Air 2S against the Sun, I have the impression that it's not due only to the bigger sensor and new technology. But DJI must also have improved considerably the lens, possibly using some coating to control flare. In low light, the previous models equipped with the same sensors as the Mini 2 were a total disaster. I've used for a good while a Mavic 2 zoom that I liked, but I would not touch the ISO slider with a pole.
had any ISO value different from the base one, it was a noise machine. In comparison, the results with the Mini 2 are really good. Three years of new technologies in this industry make a huge difference. As you can see, the quality is quite good, but even more surprising, it doesn't seem to deteriorate at a higher ISO value. ISO 1600 was something unheard of in prosumer drone equipped with the same sensor. There is of course some noise in the shadows, but the image is still very usable after the noising. I decided to test the R2S in extremely tough condition, as the previous shot was frankly too easy for this drone. It was extremely dark, and the result was pristine at every ISO value. The way the R2S renders detail and color under this condition is surreal, and of course not a hint of noise. The result is not too far from what I get with the Queen of the Night, the Nikon D850. Click on this link to access my detailed videos on specific aspects of the R2S, or in this one, if you want to know everything about the Mini 2. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.